What's up guys? In this video, I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know about modes. Yo, chill out with the YouTuber stuff. Modes are super serious. This is music theory. This will take thousands of hours for someone to learn. No, that's such a big misconception. In this video, I'm gonna change your life through modes. Okay, so grab your guitar and let's get into the lesson. You probably already know how to play modes. You would have heard about them before, but what sets apart an advanced guitarist from someone who is perhaps more beginner is not only the ability to play modes, but also to hear them and know when or when not to use them. In this lesson, I'll give you an overview of modes, what they are, when to use them, and we'll get into the first mode, Ionian, also known as the major scale. So what are modes? Here's a definition for you. Modes are scales which outline the sound of a chord. Let's take an example, key of C major. We have seven chords in the key of C major. C major seven, D minor seven, E minor seven, F major seven, G seven, A minor seven, B half diminished and back to C. So what scale do you use over each of these seven chords. Well, the first chord is pretty obvious, right? Key of C major, we just play C major over the C major chord. But what about the other six chords in the key? What scale should we as soloing guitar players use to solo over those chords? Now the first and most obvious answer, which you may be thinking of, why not just play C major over all the chords in C major? That would sound like this. And that's a really, really great question. And this is what we call the blanket approach or harmonic generalization, which is one scale over many chords. Now this approach to soloing is super valid and is really stylistically appropriate in many songs and genres. But the blanket approach fails us in three specific harmonic situations. The first situation is, what if there's a song which isn't in a major key? For example, let's say the song is in the key of C dominant nine. We can't play C major over that. A Little bit crunchy, right? And there's many other examples of songs which aren't in a major key. For example, what if the chords for a song are E minor to F major seven? What scale could we use to play over those chords? It wouldn't be the major scale. This is where modes come in. The second situation where we need modes is if there's a chord outside the key. Here's an example from Best Part by Daniel Caesar, where it goes G major seven to B flat major seven. So if we play G major over both of those chords, it's gonna sound a bit funky. We need some harmonic language, we need scales, we need modes to play over that B flat major seven. The last example is some genres of music have chords within a key, but we really wanna outline the sound of each of those chords. For example, in a two, five, one chord progression in jazz or in R&B. If we just played G major over that, it would sound okay, but if you really wanted to play over those chords, we would play a mode over each of those chords. So just to summarize, there's three situations where we need modes. The first one is if it's not in a major key. The second one is if there's a chord outside the key. And the third one is if we really wanna highlight the sound of each of the chords within a key. This is why it's so important for you to really spend the time with me on modes in this grade so we can get into each of these sounds, both in your ears, but also in your fingers. So let's take a step back and really go into what a mode is. As you know, modes are scales which help you solo or write melodies within the sound of a chord. And we'll be using chords throughout this grade to really set ourselves up with the sound of the mode. So when we play that mode, we can see how that connects to the chord. Let's walk through all the modes in C major really quickly. We'll be touching each of these modes individually in the days to come. There are seven notes in the key of C major. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Back to the root. Each of these notes has a chord. 
C major, D minor, E minor, F major 7, G7, A minor, B minor 7 flat 5, and C. Each of these chords has a mode. Those modes are C Ionian, D Dorian, E Phrygian, F Lydian, G Mixolydian, A Aeolian, also known as natural minor, and lastly, B Locrian. The simplest way to think about a mode is, let's take D Dorian for example. D Dorian is just C major, starting from the note D, which is the second. So those are the exact same notes, but we're starting from the note D. And if we have that chord and that tonality below what we're playing, it's really going to sound like a different scale. The next step here is I'm going to group the modes into two categories. The first category is major type modes. These are modes with a root major third and a five. And this is going to be our Ionian, our Lydian, and then our Mixolydian mode. And then there's that second category, which is those minor type modes. Those are darker sounds. And this is going to be our Aeolian, our Dorian, Phrygian, and our Locrian. You'll be learning each of these modes with the root note C. This is really going to help you hear each of these modes and think of them and feel them as individual sounds, scales, which you can use in your playing. And before we get started, Here's a tier list of how I rank each of these modes in terms of how useful they are to you as an improvising guitarist. And disclaimer here, this is for Western-based music. In other cultures, some modes are used more often than these ones here. So let's get into the first mode, Ionian. This is going straight to the S tier because this is the parent of all the other modes. It's the first scale you'll often learn in primary school. You will know the sound already, but the thing here is I don't want you to think of the Ionian as a boring mode. Don't think of it as a rudimentary or a beginner mode. There is so much musicality and juice which we can get from this mode. So take your time with it with me today. So coming up are a bunch of exercises where you and I will practice together. I'll be introducing you to your four step process for learning a mode. This is gonna be, first of all, play the mode in one octave, for example, C major. Step two, we're going to play and sing the scale degrees. This is going to help us internalize the sound of the mode. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. And don't worry if you're not a good singer. I'm not either. It's more about internalizing this and practicing it on our own. Step three is to play one full position of the mode. For example, C major will be like this. And lastly, step four, the most important step we'll jam together. We'll be improvising, hearing the mode and trading off together. It's gonna to be a lot of fun and we'll be providing you with a jam track so you can really get into the sound and shape of the mode on your guitar. Three, four. When you play this exercise, really pay attention to the sound of that four and the dissonance it creates when it's played over the C major chord. That's this note right here. It's really quite crunchy. So I want you to keep that in mind as you play this exercise. Two, three, Five, six, seven, one, 
six, five, four, three, two, one. In this exercise, we're saying the name of each of the scale degrees and we're singing them. Why do we sing? Well, first of all, it's not to be a singer, it's just to hear those notes. The voice is a tool which we can use to take something which is external, like a new theoretical concept or sound, and bring it internal. Through the voice, we can really start feeling and hearing that sound. This is gonna be particularly important once we get to some of these more advanced or colorful modes. So I really encourage you to take your time and slow it down if need be for the major scale because you're gonna set yourself up for success and start developing or continuing to develop that connection between what you hear via the voice to what you play. Now I'll just quickly highlight each of the sounds of these scale degrees. This is gonna be really important even if you know the sound of the major scale is because we'll be adjusting each of these scale degrees in the future scales. So this might seem basic or beginner to you but it's really important to associate a sound with each of these intervals and scale degrees. So the first one is that nine, one, two. So the two is also the nine and this is a really consonant sound. You often hear this higher up in a chord voicing, something like this rather than down low. It's also a nice soloing tool, which you'll hear often. Now the third, that's the major third. This is really consonant. This defines our major sound. So that's our one, two, three. And that's giving it that happy vibe. We'll also see the major third in Lydian and mixed Lydian coming up. Now the fourth, this is where it, where it gets interesting. This is our perfect fourth. So this is where you get sounds like C sus. And it's also where a bit of a crunch can happen if you're playing that major third. So if I were to play C major chord, and if I played a F note, which is the 11 or four on top of that, it's gonna sound super crunchy like this. <laughs> so in jazz, often we would call that a, a void note, but it is a really nice note to explore, particularly if you're going for that suspended feeling or sound in your soloing or your chords. The five, that's just gonna be your classic power fifth. You would have heard that before. So that's a really consonant note, which is found in the triad. The six, now this is where we get our major six chord from, which is a very consonant, kind of plain sounding chord. But the six is a nice safe note. At this point, I do wanna mention that the major pentatonic is built into the major scale. This is our one, two, three. Five, six. So all of those consonant notes, which I just referred to now, are built into the major pentatonic. And then lastly, we have the seventh up here. This is another really crunchy note and really colorful note to add to your solos and really bring out, um, which we'll be doing shortly in the final step in the jam. So you really wanna kind of land on that, really hear that note and don't pass over it, don't ignore it. It's one of the most beautiful sounds to access within the major scale. So that's it for step two, loop it a few times, sing it, hear those notes, and really get familiar with each of these scale degrees because that's gonna set you up for success for the future modes, which we'll cover. Two and three and four. This is our C major in a full position. If you know the cage system, this is in our E shape. If you don't know the cage system, shout out to the cage learning pathway with Molly Miller on pickup music. So this is our full two octave position of the C major scale. I'm gonna run through it slowly for you if it's a new position. And even if it is a position which you already know, I encourage you to really make sure you know it well because we'll be building and adjusting in the same position for Lydian, for Mixolydian, and the other scales. So the bottom half is what we covered in the first two steps. And let's continue up. 
This is just one fingered per fret, so pinky here on the root note D string on the 10th fret, reaching back with our first finger. Noticing that's that same three to four step there. So this is where you get chords like, or that classic, the Jimi Hendrix thing. That's all coming out of that three to four. Going up, we have the five, six. Seventh here, just sitting below the root note. So I really want you to see how each of those notes fits against the bar chord here. This is a one, three, five. And use those triadic notes as your reference points to see the other scale degrees. So seven sits below one. Four sits above three. Six above five. I want you to start really seeing a scale shape as well as the chord shape because this is going to set you up for success once we start doing things like let's do the sharp 11, let's do the 13, let's do a minor 6 9 chord. All of this is going to re relate back to what we're working on today, which is just the plain old Ionian scale in the C major chord. Last thing to mention in the right hand, I encourage you to do alternate picking, starting with the downstroke all the way up, then downstroke on the root note all the way down, because it's going to help you develop that consistency in the right hand. You can also practice legato if you're a more advanced guitar player. Welcome to the jam. What we'll be doing is using each of the things we've practiced and trading off between us. So let's take that first octave. I'm going to play something and it'll be your turn but you have to sing what you play. Here we go. One, two, three, four, three, two. So that's what I'm gonna do. Now, I want you to play a phrase, sing it, and play it. Go ahead. Let's do it again. One, two, three, four, five. Turn. Here we go. Let me hear it. All right, this time I really want you to highlight that seventh. Let me hear that. Okay, this time highlight the fourth. on it. Feel that suspension. Your turn. Hang on that fourth. The fourth is not just a note, it's a sound. It's a vibe. Hang on. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play something and I want you to play it back. It's gonna be super simple. I believe in you, you can do it. Here we go. It's gonna be in the lower octave. Hear that? All right, listen to me. Play it. And again. All right. And again. Let me hear that. And again. Your turn. Okay, now I really want you to get in touch with the sound of the scale. 
So what we're going to do here is we're hiding my fretboard and I'm going to play a line. You have to play it back. Can you hear it? Here we go. Nice and easy, let's hear that. Okay, ready for something more challenging? Here we go. Let's hear that. Right now, I'm just gonna do anything I want. I want you to respond with your own line, slow it down, and make sure you hear it before you play it. Your turn, whatever you like. My turn. We're gonna leave the track rolling for a second here. Have fun with it. I'll play some chords. mode is a really uplifting and ethereal sounding major type mode. You can think of it as Ionian, but instead of a four, it's got that sharp four note. Lydian is the fourth mode of the major scale. It's used over major seven chords and it's actually very similar to Ionian apart from one note. That's going to be the fourth. So Ionian, Lydian, one, two, three, sharp four, five. So instead of a four, we have a sharp four. That defines the Lydian sound. Now, great news here. Everything you've learned over Ionian is gonna apply over Lydian. We just have to adjust that one note in both our chords and our scale position. Now, I really encourage you to take your time with Lydian. It's a really enjoyable mode to solo with. There's so many colors and sounds to explore. And I'm putting Lydian in the C tier because it's slightly less common, more of an advanced sound, but it's still super enjoyable to solo with. But first, a quick recap of Ionian. This is really important because we're gonna build off this today. So Ionian, you learned how to play it in one octave. You sang those notes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. You also learned one position in the E shape here, so you can solo and express yourself and improvise within the Ionian mode. We'll be taking those same steps that you went through for Ionian on Lydian today, so let's get into it. So first, let's start off with our chord to outline the sound of the mode. You can use this voice in here, which is C major seven sharp 11. What's really nice about this chord shape is we have that sharp 11 there, which is the characteristic note of Lydian. Some people call it the Lydian note. And that's up here, the sharp 11. Next, let's quickly walk through the scale. We'll be practicing this together in a second. Root, two, three, sharp four, five, six, seven, octave. Quick aside here, four is the same as 11. So you can say sharp four or sharp 11, those mean the same thing, it's that note. And a quick rule of thumb is four plus seven equals 11. Now lastly, let's build up the chord so you can see how all of these notes stack and which notes are the really nice color tones to hit. So we have our one, three, five major triad. Major seventh on the top, this is our C major seven arpeggio. 
Then we have the ninth, this is a nice color tone. Sharp 11, you already know about that, that's the Lydian note. And then the six is also a nice color note, like the nine. There are three main musical situations in a song where you might use the Lydian mode for a melody or a solo. The first and most obvious one is when you're on the four chord in a key. So let's say we're in the key of G major. The four chord in G major is C because one, two, three, four. So if you had a chord progression going from G to C, you could play C Lydian over the C chord. Now sometimes it may not be stylistically appropriate to be playing Lydian over the four chord because it's a bit of an advanced colorful sound. Most often guitarists will just use a major pentatonic or sometimes just Ionian on the four chord. The second situation where you can use Lydian is anytime you see a major seventh chord, whatever that chord may be, you can just go ahead and use Lydian and the sharp 11 chord over that. For example, let's say you're in the key of G major. You could play G Lydian over that G major chord for a colorful, dreamy, slightly modern sound. Now this is a less common, more advanced sound, so let's move on to the third situation. And the last situation where you could use Lydian is anytime you're in a key and you see an unusual major seven chord outside the key. For example, let's say you're in the key of G major and you see an E flat major seven chord. If there's a major seven chord outside of the key, your go-to scale of choice is gonna be Lydian. That will sound like this. That was E flat Lydian over E flat major seven. So that's an overview of Lydian, which is one of my favorite modes. Let's get into these four steps together so you can really practice hearing it, not just playing it, and then we'll improvise using the mode. One, two, three, four. This is one octave of C Lydian. We're here in this E position, and I really want you to take your time with this exercise. It's not so much about the technique, it's more about hearing it, hearing each of those intervals, in particular, really feeling and hearing that sharp 11. Really make it sing, and don't rush through this. It's really important to soak in the sound of this before we move on to step two, where we'll be singing and naming each of these intervals. One, two, three, four. Root, two, three, sharp four, five, six, seven. Down. Root, seven, six, five, sharp four. So now you are naming each of the scale degrees and singing those. Why do we sing? Again, because singing helps us internalize the sound of a scale, of a mode. So rather than letting our fingers dictate the music which we play, we're developing our ear and letting our ear dictate what we play, which in the long run is gonna help us to be more musical. So if this is a new scale to you, the tricky spot there is from the three to the sharp four, because we're used to hearing it going half a step to the four. Da -da. You really want to be hearing that jump up from three to sharp four. 
You almost want to overshoot it a little bit rather than undershooting it. On the way down, it's a little easier. You can really hear how the sharp four sits below the five. You could also think of a song like The Simpsons. And reverse it. The Simpsons. You really want to build in that sharp 11 sound because that's the defining note of the Lydian mode. One, two, three, and So this is our full position of C Lydian. Now, I want to start you off by referencing back to the Ionian shape, which you already know. So it's all based around this C major bar chord. So I want you to visualize that in the Lydian mode. So we still have our one, three, five, one, three, five, one, three, five, and then one on the top. And we still have that major seventh. We also have the ninth, just like an Ionian. So let's walk through this position uh, nice and slowly, uh, if you don't know it already. So going from the root here, one, two, three, just like an Ionian, and there's gonna be that skip up, like you were practicing in the first two steps. Seventh, and then we have the root here. So let's keep working our way up the uh, string set here. And Pinky is on the root note here, 10th fret. Reaching back with our first finger to the seventh fret here. And so that's that little kind of pocket which may be new to you. Um, and this is that five to sharp 11, or sharp 11 to five. Let's walk through the scale position slowly. You already know the lower octave. One, two, three, sharp four, five, six, seven, one. So let's continue on from the root note here. This is pinky on the 10th fret, D string. Now we're gonna go one, two, three. So we're reaching back here, seven, nine. And this is where it gets fun. So this is our sharp 11 up here, and you know this from that chord, right? It's sitting right below the five here. So the five is from a bar chord. So anytime you wanna find the sharp 11, the quickest way is just find the five, drop half a step. So let's get that scale position. And then we're just gonna keep going up, six, seven, one. You can also grab the nine on the top there, which is quite a nice little movement. In terms of the right hand, I recommend you use alternate picking, just starting with a down, up. So down, up, down, up, down, up, down. It's a little bit tricky because when you hit the new octave, because it's a seven note scale, you'll be starting on an up stroke. That's totally fine at these slower tempos. What you wanna do is just simplify things for yourself. So having that down, up, down, up on your right hand, allows you to focus on the left hand. And it'll also set you up for higher tempos and higher speeds playing the scale. On the way down, just staying on a down stroke. And I really want you to take it slow, make those notes sing, particularly that sharp 11, get a bit of vibrato in there. Really make it sing, it's not just the note, it's not just the scale position, these are sounds which you need to internalize and you should internalize because once you have them, then you can use those and hear those sounds in your solos, in your songs, in your compositions. Welcome to The Jam. This is where you and I will be improvising, hearing, singing, playing with the Lydian mode. So first what we're gonna do is I'm gonna play something short and I'm gonna sing it. I want you to play something as well and sing it while you play. So here we go. Your turn. Keep it slow and sing those notes. 
I'll give you another chance here. Even if it's just one, two, three. One, two, three. Back to me. Now I'm going to really highlight the sharp 11. Your turn. Really highlight that sharp 11. Exaggerate it. You want to overuse something which is new to you and then dial it back later on. Okay, so now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to play something and I want you to play it back. It's going to be really simple, don't worry. Use your ear. You can also watch my fretboard. Here we go. Go for it. Let me hear that. All right, here's a new phrase. Let me hear that. Let's keep doing this a few more times. We're gonna keep doing that and we're gonna hide my fretboard so you really have to use your ears. Here we go. My turn. Let me hear that. All right, now I'm just going to leave the track running and I really want to hear you exploring it. Highlight that sharp 11. Let me hear it and have fun with it. Mixolydian mode is a super bluesy, funky and versatile mode for you to use. The Mixolydian mode is the fifth mode of the major scale. It's used over dominant chords. Here's what it sounds like. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, flat seven, one. I'm putting Mixolydian in the B tier because it's such an enjoyable scale to solo with. It's such a common sound, particularly in those jam band type of songs, blues, rock, jazz, all of the fun music to solo over, you'll often be using the Mixolydian mode to solo with. Now in our soloing pathway, you've already touched on this mode, so we'll be going deeper into it, perhaps in a new position for you and really getting the sound of it in our ears. So let's take one minute now to recap everything we've covered so far, which is Ionian here in our C position. That is our one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And really importantly here, this is a major seven. Go into our root note. When we move to Lydian, we just changed one note, which was the sharp four. One, two, three, sharp four. Five, six, and that still had the major seven. 
Now, both of those modes, Ionian and Lydian, are used over major seven chords. That is a chord with a one, three, five major seven. And maybe you can see where I'm heading is that today we'll be adjusting that seven and making it a flat seven. This creates our C dominant seven chord. And that flat seven is one of the defining notes of the Mixolydian dominant sound. So you can think of the Mixolydian scale as the Ionian scale, but just with that flat seventh. And we'll be seeing this in action once we get to the full scale position, we'll just be adjusting that one note. And then moving that down a note. Let's get into Mixolydian. So as always, we're gonna play our chord first. Why? Because a chord outlines the sound of a mode. And as you get deeper and deeper into modes and theory, you'll start to realize that a mode or a scale and a chord are actually the same thing. It's just a different way of playing it. A scale is it uh, in a linear fashion and a chord is just playing those notes at the same time. So the chord I want you to play right now is gonna be a C dominant 13, looks like this. And this has a couple of really important things. The first thing is it has that dominant seventh in there. And also has the major third because the third gives it that major. It's kind of a happy sound, right? It's not a sad sound. And that dominant gives it that dominant sound. And if you add those two notes together, that's gonna to be the interval of a tritone which gives it that tension because often we'll be using dominant chords and the Mixolydian mode to add some tension in our music. Now we're adding another note on the top here, which is our 13th, and this is a color note. So you can add color notes or tones to all types of chords. The 13th is a really nice color tone to add on to our 137. And here is our C Mixolydian mode. Those are one, two, three, four, five, six, flat seven root. And I really want you to pay attention to that half step between the six and the flat seven. There's a lot of musicality and language within that half step, this type of sound. The other thing which you may have already noticed, and I'm sure you're doing already um, in our previous lessons, is sliding into that major third. Anytime you see that third, slide into it to get a bit of a bluesy sound in your playing. Let's walk through each of these scale degrees nice and slowly because they each have a unique sound which we need to bring into our ears. So that first note is gonna be the two. This is a nice color tone. You'll often see this in a C9 chord. It's a really nice one to target. That three is gonna be that major third that gives it that bluesy sound. You'll often see a bend or a slide from the flat three into the three. The four, just like in Ionian, uh, you can suspend the third and that's where you get this sound. This is where you get chords like C13 sus. You might know the sound. Moving on, we have the five. This is just a basic power five. We have the six, also known as the 13th, which you already have learned in a C13 voice. And then we have that six to flat seven little spot there. And this is really important for you to get familiar with, both in a sliding, context and also a bending. Super, super common little spot on the guitar to really add some flavor to your plan. Now, where should you use the Mixolydian mode? There are four common musical situations in a song where you can use this in your melodies and soloing. The first and most common example is when you have a tonic dominant chord. So this is when the song's in the key of C, but it's in the key of C dominant. So you would play C Mixolydian over that if you wanted. 
this is really common, as I'm sure you know, in blues and in funk music. So we would play our C mixolydian over our tonic one dominant chord. The second and still fairly common example is over the five chord in a major key. So let's take um, a song in the key of F major. The five in the key of F major is C7. So you often hear a 5-1 chordal movement in music, which I'm sure you are familiar with, like a... So on that 5 chord, C7, C is the 5 of F, therefore we would play C mixolydian. And that's going to resolve quite nicely to the chord F. This is quite common in jazz where often you want to outline the sound of each of the chords in the key, particularly those five chords. Now real quickly, there's two other spots in a major key where you'll often see mixolydian use. This is a bit more advanced than for the jazz uh, musicians there, but stick with me or skip it. And this is going to be leading to our four chords, so key of F major, four chord is B flat major. Sometimes we would play F7 leading to that four chord. The scale we would use over that F7 would be F mixolydian, so F major, F mixolydian. The other example will be when you're leading to the 5 chord, this would be a 2-7 chord, and that would be a progression sounding like this. So that's F major is our one, G7 is our two, we play G mixolydian over that, and then on the C7 that's our five, we can also play C mixolydian. If that was a little bit too music theory heavy for you, don't worry. I encourage you to take our jazz learning pathway where we go super deep into this, and you would have covered this a little bit in grade two with Carl. Now the third scenario where you'll be using mixolydian is over a blues, and you can use this over the one, four, and five chord in a major blues. So let's say blues in the key of C, C mixolydian on C dominant, F7, F mixolydian, take it to the five, G mixolydian over G7. And those are just some options which you can use over the one, four, and five chord in the blues. Now, the last scenario where you can use mixolydian is anytime you see a dominant nine or a dominant 13 chord, more than likely you can just use your mixolydian from each of those chords. So let's just say you're playing a song and you see a dominant 13 chord or you hear a dominant 13 chord, you can use your mixolydian scale over that, for example. That's G major to F dominant 13. I could play F mixolydian over that. So that's mixolydian. Don't worry if that was a little bit too music theory, I'll be walking it through with you super slowly because again, the point here is not to understand mixolydian, it's not to be able to play mixolydian, although you will be able to, it's more about being able to hear mixolydian, hear each of those scale degrees. So that's what we'll be getting into right now with our four steps. See you in step one. Two. This is our one octave of C mixolydian. 
we have one, two, three, four, five, six. And unlike Ionian and Lydian, where we have the major seven, we have that flat seven. So take it slow. This should feel easy for you, but this is really important that you can start hearing this because in step two, we'll be singing this together. I'll see you there. One, two, let's sing it. One, two, three, four, five, six, flat seven, one, down. One, flat seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Great, so now we're seeing the scale degrees. All of them are the same as Ionian, except instead of that seven, we have the flat seven. And when you're singing it, you're really gonna start feeling the intervallic jumps between each of those notes. By that, I mean the distance between each note. So you can hear that three, half step, because sometimes when we're singing, we wanna go da, we wanna go up too high. So we really have to get in touch with each of these half steps. And the half step, which is really important here in Mixolydian, is that six to flat seven. You really wanna feel what that sounds like. And then inversely, dropping from that root down to the flat seven is really important for you to hear. So, and that's where you get that. And if you can hear that and sing that, then it's really gonna set you up for success for using this Mixolydian scale. Two, three, four. This is our full position of C mixolydian. We're still here in the E shape of the case position. And the lower octave is what you've been practicing. So let's continue up. I'll be giving you some tips for your fretting hand as well. So continuing on from pinky here, 10th fret D string, which is our root note. We're gonna go one, two, three. Four. So this is just the same as Ionian. Should feel super comfortable for you right now. Now this is where we're gonna to have to do a bit of finger gymnastics. So put on your spandex and put your first finger up here on the eighth fret. So that little movement there is, look at how my first finger steps across, again slowly. And that's gonna set us up for the five, six, seven, flat seven. So again. And then our first finger is in position for the root note. It's really important to think ahead with your first finger when you're going up this position. Because if you don't, you're gonna be stuck in this awkward position of two frets per finger, which is kind of like walking with two left shoes on your feet. So, on the way down, um, actually before I do, I wanna mention that the nine is up there if you wanna grab that. Even the third if you wanna stretch up a little bit. But on the way down, we're gonna do the same thing in reverse. So root note. That should feel quite nice. There's a lot of musicality there. Or the. So that's gonna work really nicely for you. Let's continue down. And then here we're gonna do a little um, skip uh, position change. So we're going to pinky here. Let me do that again so you can see it. So what's happening there is first fingers here, but in order on the G string, to reach back here, we're setting ourselves up for success. We're thinking ahead with our pinky here on the 10th fret. So that's. 
And now we're in this position, which is gonna carry us all the way down. So you can kind of think of this scale position in two parts. There's the uh, E to G strings. There's this positional change where our finger comes up onto the eighth fret and then the top two strings. And then on the way down, we transition back. And often when you're playing guitar, those are the awkward spots maybe you wanna practice, but also maybe you wanna avoid. So you could say something like. And then down below. Because if you're playing a line in that awkward spot, it gets a little bit kind of walking with two, two left shoes, as I said. So practice it slow, right hand, keep it simple, alternate picking, starting with the downstroke, and really make sure you're transitioning nicely between the G and the B strings. Let's get into the jam. The most important part, we will be improvising with the scale. First, we really wanna zone in on that major third. I'll go first and then you hit it. Your turn. Let's do that again. Go for it. Cool, let's do the sixth of the back seven. Your turn. All right, let's really hit that flat seven. Go for it. And again. Now I'm gonna play some rhythm, I just want you to go for it, have fun. Sounding great. You're a serious guitar player. I know that because you made it all the way through this one hour long video. So go to Pickup Music and take out a Pickup Music membership. It has a 14 day free trial you get access to not only this program, but every class we've released, including sync tabs, jam tracks, and personalized feedback. Make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel, hit the like button and the bell to get notified when we release more free lessons here on YouTube.